Okay, guys. Uh, welcome, and thank you for joining. And uh, yeah, so this series is called Unity 3D Concept to Completion. Uh, most of you already know me. My name's Ernest Loveland, and I'm a technical evangelist intern at Microsoft South Africa. And uh, I'm going to start off by just giving some additional uh, details. So my social media and blog is all available through my website. That'll be the easiest way to get to it. And it'll also be good to try get in touch through the Facebook group. I will be using the Mia Game Development Champs page for posting the slides and the videos uh, that are the recordings of these sessions. So if you're looking for them, that's where they'll be, and I'll try get them up as soon as possible after uh, each session. So you don't have to worry if you miss things. Uh, the content will be going up there. So just a, a little talk about requirements. What you will need is some kind of programming knowledge. I do prefer that you use C Sharp, and all of my sessions I'll be doing C Sharp exclusively. But if you only know JavaScript, that is also all right. So you don't have to worry too much if you don't know C Sharp at all. Another thing that you'll need is Windows Store accounts. One of the requirements is for well for this course is that by the end you try submit a game to the Windows Phone and Windows 8 stores. So this is available for students through DreamSpark for free, or you can buy a, a developer license and that lasts a year and then you can submit to the stores. The last thing you'll need, which we'll need for next week, is Unity 3D. So you don't need it today, so if you don't have it yet you don't have to worry, but it would be very nice if you had it for yourself, especially if you're going to try build a game. So it's approximately one gigabyte, and you can get it from unity3d.com. So just in terms of the goals, just to make sure that it's clear, we're going to, by the end of the, the three-month period that this is stretched over, create a complete game, each one of us. We're also going to learn enough about Unity 3D to build the games that we want to, and we're going to submit a project to market. So the game that you build will be submitted to Windows, the Windows Store and the Windows Phone 8 Store. And this will help you by gaining your skills in managing your project. So in terms of game development stuff, uh, you need to be able to manage your project slightly differently to normal software product, just because of the different processes involved. Uh, this is the, the schedule that we'll be following. So today's call is the introductory call, and we're going to cover the, the basics of designing a game and the basics of the Unity interface. We'll then cover 2D and Unity, and 3D and Unity. We'll do polish or juice, which is basically making your game look and feel as good as possible. We'll cover the platform specifics, so building for Windows Phone 8 and building for Windows 8, and store submission. And you'll see we have community calls scheduled as well. In these calls, what we'll do is, as a, as a group, we'll help each other build features and things into the games that we are building uh, and help us get closer to completion. And I'd like to encourage you guys to ask questions whenever you need to. And uh, I want to just quickly get some sort of feel, especially for those that don't have microphones. Uh, what would you like to get out of this? So I'm going to quickly swap to the whiteboard, and you can just quickly let me know what sort of things you want to get out of this. Very, very quiet from you guys. Okay, so you'd like to be familiar with Unity because you'll be using it for a host of projects this year. That's good. Um, the, the basic Unity familiarity on its own we'll be covering today, and hopefully it'll end up being very useful at 
a later stage when we start working on projects so you'll know what I'm talking about. I want to polish up my knowledge of Unity 3D. Okay, that's good. Anybody else have any other input? Brief overview of the series. Uh, should I quickly go over the overview again, quickly? Uh, what type of game we can develop? So the, the series is going to cover 2D and 3D concept in Unity. Um, we're going to today speak about the basics of deciding about a game idea so that next week we can get, when we get together, we'll have some sort of idea of what we want to build. And the, there's no such thing as there is a single way to build a game. So we're going to cover gen, as, a, as a general sort of session. Uh, okay, Unity is not used only for games, but I'll touch on that in a moment. We're going to cover the general things that we need to develop and the community calls will focus on helping you implement things in your games. So Unity isn't only used for games. You can use it for pretty much any graphical programming. Uh, essentially, it's a, a 3D and 2D rendering engine. It just happens to work very, very well for making games because it's been built with games in mind. Does that answer your question? All right, so I'm going to move on here a little bit and we're going to start touching on the actual processes to follow. So when we talk about designing games, there are a few things that you should keep in mind. The, the core idea that you decide to build your game around, for instance, pushing puzzle blocks around to reach a goal, should be what you focus on when you start out. So as a good example, you need to pick these simple core mechanics to simplify what you need to build for the end product. So the end product could be infinitely more complex. You could add many different types of blocks that you do different things with. But you need to have that simple core mechanic that makes your game idea make sense. Another idea, another concept uh, in terms of design that would be good to cover is the fact that you need to work out what the minimum viable product is. So the a minimum viable product is something that you could show. Ah, that is a good point, sorry. One moment. Can you see the slides now? Okay, sorry about that. Um, the the minimum viable product will be the bare minimum you need to build into your game to be able to uh, show somebody that it's working. Now, the the reason it's important to have a minimum viable product is you want to do the the least amount of work to have a finished product to show people. If somebody can't try your game and see what you're trying to do very quickly, they're not going to keep their interest. Uh, for a very long time in your actual project. So building something that's uh, minimal will help you get quicker to that point where people can say if they do or don't like your idea. So this means when you design your game, you need to focus on simplifying everything as much as possible rather than just adding things. So just as a, a simple example, if we took a look at the, the core mechanic example at the top where you push puzzle blocks around, uh, if you had something else in that sentence, so push puzzle blocks around and jump over holes, it immediately becomes more complex, but it doesn't add anything to the game on its own. So we can simplify it by taking away the jumping over holes, uh, and hopefully that'll make it a lot easier to implement our minimum viable product. So just to, to take a look at an example process, so I'm fighting at the moment with my zooming tool. So let's just do this. There we go. So just as, a, as an example, let's take that 
puzzle game idea and add bombs. So if I have bombs that I need to move around to destroy things, um, so bombs that can destroy walls, and I have a little player guy, and I want him to be able to push bombs, so he'll push the bombs, and the bombs will destroy the walls. And I need to get the player to some specific point. It will it'll mean that uh, I have a very simple mechanic to implement. Now, there are many other things that I can put in. And at a later stage in the, the process of design and development, once I've got this, this mechanic of pushing the bomb around and destroying walls, I can take a look at other mechanics. So other things that there might be are smaller bombs. So a smaller bomb might fall through a hole. So if, there, if there's some kind of hole, uh, you could expect smaller bombs to fall through them. And these are very, very simple mechanics and simple interactions that we can reuse and reuse in as many ways as we want. So just as a, as a proof of concept, uh, if we take a look at a, a game that I've been working on in the meantime, the process can be taken to the point where I have bombs that I can move around and they can destroy walls and I can show that these bombs make up a mechanic that makes sense to a player and is fun to play. So this is the idea. This was my minimum, uh, minimum viable product where I can show you that using just bombs and pushing them around so that they can destroy things, I can build a puzzle game. So it's something that you need to keep in mind when you design your own games that you should keep to very, very simple concepts that are easy to implement. So the next question that is probably important is when do you start making the game? Well, there are three things that you need to make sure that you cover pretty well. First of all, you need to have a good solid idea to start from. There's no reason for you to overcomplicate things when you have your initial simple concept. A good example is, is if you take a look at very popular games, let's say Half-Life on computer or FIFA, it's got a very simple idea, but in implementation it'll take a lot of work. It needs lots of art, it needs lots of sounds, and generally, as a one-person team, you're going to find that it doesn't suit your needs to have that as your solid idea to start from. The second thing you need to take note of is you should have some sort of minimum viable product or proof of concept. So once you've got that prototype where it shows that simple mechanic and the simple mechanic works well and people like it, you've got this. Um, it's very important that you don't just jump into a big project and then find halfway through that nobody likes it because then you're wasting your time. And the other thing is you should be able to see the game working around your minimum viable product. And what this means is even though you're stuck to a very simple principle to begin with, you can imagine new mechanics and new interactions in your game that can take place inside your minimum viable product. So in that prototype, you can in your head picture what different things happen. So that, that's a very strong key point because if you can't see how the gameplay would work in your minimum viable product, chances are you won't be able to implement it either. So you just need to keep these things in mind going forwards. So the next thing is when do you start adding features? So you have to have a completed feature from the core concept before you finish any new features. And the idea behind this is when you add a bomb, the first thing you need to do is it needs to be moved. The second thing you need to do is when it lands on a trigger pad, it needs to start exploding. And then if it explodes, it needs to destroy walls. These are simple mechanics that when added together make up what a bomb is. But by simplifying the core mechanic of how a bomb works, which is firstly that it can be moved around, it made it much easier to think of how to implement it and how to actually get to adding the feature. So the idea behind this is you can safely enter what's called a wash, rinse, and repeat cycle. You can add in something very simple, test it, 
change it to how you like it and then repeat it for everything that you want to add in and as you go along you can see what works what doesn't work and very quickly add and remove things as you need to so just just as a side note before we start taking a look at the unity user interface itself the things that I've said may not necessarily work for you in terms of design and process, everybody will need to find their own process that suits them. When I work on games, the first thing that I do is I build a, a, a minimum viable product and then I work outwards from there. As a, as a person that obviously has different processes, it might make sense for you to prototype lots of separate minimum viable products and then put them together. The main thing that you need to remember is you should find what you enjoy doing and make you make it your focus so with doing this you need to just stay motivated and do what you need to for keeping your own interest so if you're not interested in your project you can't expect other people to be interested in it and it's difficult to stay motivated because sometimes results can be slow so you need to be dedicated to your project so we're going to jump into an introduction in the, uh, to the Unity 3D editor, and we're going to cover as much about the editor as we can. Uh, but before we do that, does anybody have any questions at this point? Or is everything all right up to now? OK, I see typing. Everything's good. All right, so I'm going to switch over now to the Unity editor, and I've got a project open in it already. So don't worry about the, the, the project for now. This is just because it will help me give you a better understanding of how the different parts of the editor work, and I will be zooming in on things. So for starters, we're going to take a look at this bottom left corner of the screen. Now you can move things around in the editor as much as you want. So you can have the layout that you want. I just happen to keep it in basically the default layout. So the project pane basically helps you with organization of your project files and folders. And if you right click in this assets area over here, you'll see that you can add in objects such as folders, scripts, and prefabs. And we'll touch more on what these are uh, in a short bit. But essentially, anything that you want to add to your project will end up in this project area. So this, this would be if you used Visual Studio or another development environment before your sort of solution or your solution explorer. The next thing to take a look at is the console pane. So under the console pane, there's quite a few interesting things that can happen here. And the major ones that we'll be using a lot when we get to the actual implementation of games is drawing of messages like these, which are debug messages. So you'll notice I have things like finding star level 34 over here. And this is just something that I've logged in one of my objects that I know what's happening. So debug data is very easy for you to output, and this the, the console area will also show you all your errors and warnings. So this is great for debugging as well. The next thing we're going to take a look at in the Unity Editor is the hierarchy. So on the right hand side here you can see we've got a part of this, the, the scene. All of the objects that are in the scene will show up in the hierarchy on this list. So this list is the important list for each scene. Each of the objects in here is an instance of an object inside of the scene. And by selecting a different object here, I can change its properties, move it around, and find it in the scene. So if we just go back out, if I click on the play button, you'll see I focus onto the play button. So that leads us actually to the next pane. And the next pane here you'll see is the inspector. So if you were quick with your eyes, you would have noticed that it changed. So now that I've selected this play button, you'll see I have a bunch of options here. And I've got transform, which contains the x, y, and z coordinates, as well as rotation and scaling data, so making things bigger or smaller or rotating it. And it's got a sprite, a sprite renderer. 
So this sprite renderer is what's known as a component. Well, all of these things are known as components. But what this basically means is I can disable and enable components and change properties on the components uh, all within this editor. So just as a, a simple example, you can see you can add a component here. If I click on the button on the menu, it'll give me an option to create a new script or choose an existing script. So scripts are components. And we'll look at the, that more in detail just now. So once we've looked at the inspector pane, we can move back into the scene. So the important part of the scene is the fact that this isn't the, the in-game view of the scene itself. So scenes are basically different levels that you can switch between. And this is your programmer's, like, what you see is what you get editor. Um, for objects inside your game world. And if you take a look at the game, this would be more what the game's render would look like. And if we run the game, this is the view that we'll get. So you'll see running it, it maximizes, and I can see what's happening. So this is very, very simple uh, to understand what the scene and the game pane are. And you'll notice that I have different windows here and we're not going to touch on them too much. We'll go into detail about them, such as the animator and the animation, when we get to those in our 2D and 3D tutorials. So it's important to know that you can find additional windows and panes. So under the window menu, there are a bunch of options here that you can get. For instance, we'll be using at some point the sprite editor and the animation. And if you happen to accidentally get rid of a specific pane or window, you can get it back from this menu. So if you have issues, that'll be where you go. The next thing we're going to take a look at is the component menu. So this component menu contains all of the scripts that you've got uh, in your project. So you'll see I've got lots of different things like a goal script, flavor tiles, bomb success, etc that are all specific to this project, but I can add them from this menu. So if I select an object inside my hierarchy, I can add a script to it directly. Another thing that's important to note is there are things like audio, to add audio sources, and things like physics 2D and physics in 3D. And these are all components that Unity gives us that we can add on to our object inside our editor. And this makes it a lot quicker for us to prototype things that require physics or uh, physics or rendering specialties or anything like that. So you should really get uh, get down and take a look when you've installed Unity at what all the options are and perhaps read up a little bit about what they do. We'll touch more on all the different things that we are going to use in each of the actual sessions where we cover the things for doing things in 2D and 3D. So the next thing is the game object menu. Now, the game object menu, if you see here, if I click Create Empty, it gives me an object in my scene. And we're going to be using this game object uh, menu quite a bit. Primarily, when 2D, we'll be using it to create sprites, which are basically 2D, uh, 2D images that we can show. And we'll cover that more in detail in the Unity, the, the 2D part of Unity session next week. But there's other important things here that you need to take note of. So you'll see there are things like terrain, light, and particle systems. And these are things that we will end up using a lot in our games for adding quality to the game and making it more polished for the end player. Um, so it'll be important for you to understand that some of the the built-in things like lights you'll want to use from the game object menu instead of building one your own, which you'll do with create empty. The last window, the last menu that we're going to take a look at here is assets. So this is the same menu as what you get when you right-click in the project view. And from here, you can create folders, uh, scripts, prefabs, materials, animations, all that kind of thing. and a lot of what we do when it comes to creating assets will be done from this menu. The only reason I'm showing this as a menu from here now at the moment is the fact that you can import packages. 
So packages are Unity's ways of sharing things like art, scripts, and so on to multiple people where they can easily drag and drop them into their project. So if I wanted to add in character controllers, such as a third-person character controller, I could just add the character controller package and find the script that I want. So that concludes the, the main menu part. Have there been any questions or was anything not clear? Okay, I'm not seeing any questions. If you if you do have questions, you must just send them. I'm happy to repeat things or answer questions. I am watching the chat. Okay, cool. So we're going to move on to talk a bit about building. So if you go to File, Build Settings, and I'll zoom in on this. So File, Build Settings, you'll get this menu over here. Now you will note that there are a bunch of scenes listed here. So like I said, these are different screens that I can show to the user or different levels. And there's a section specifically for platform. So the Unity platform that you are currently working under will have a Unity symbol next to it. So you can see here I'm on the web player. But if I select a different platform, for instance, the Windows Store apps, I can switch platform by clicking on it and then clicking switch platform and build a project that I can deploy to a Windows 8 device. So this is important because you get the web player, the PC, Mac, and Linux standalone, the Android, BlackBerry, and Windows Store and Windows Phone app versions for free, which means all of these platforms are available to you by building a single game inside Unity. Now the build process is quite easy. You'll just choose which build you want and run a build and you can output it to a specific folder. And we are going to focus mostly on either web player or desktop until we are ready to submit a Windows Store or Windows Phone 8 app. Another thing that you should just note while we're here is when it comes to changing things. So if you've built apps for the Windows Store before, you'll know that there are a bunch of properties that you need to set up. So if you on under if you select Windows Store apps, you can click player settings. Let me just zoom in here. And you can see here all of the, the general packaging info that you'd have in your Visual Studio project for building a, a, a Metro application is available to you to change inside Unity. So this is really cool because you can make your changes inside your game project instead of having to try build a separate package. Um, I would just like to point out before we move on that if you're going to be building your project, you should build it for as many platforms as possible. So the idea behind this is, is if you want feedback from people, they need to be able to play it on whatever computer they happen to be on at the time. Now, I know for a fact that most of my friends have Windows PCs. So I build for Windows and then I build on the web player. And the web player is available on pretty much every other operating system as well. But I also have friends who don't use those. And for work, they have, for instance, Macs. And for them, it makes sense to do a native build for them to run the game. And it's easier for me to get feedback from them if they can run the game on the system that they have access to every day. So the more platforms you build for, the better. If anybody has any questions, be sure to shout. So we're going to jump into a little bit of a, a practical part now, uh, just to show some of the workflow in Unity. So we're going to look at adding scenes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go File, New Scene. And let's, do I want to save changes? Let's not save. Are any platforms pro version locked? Yes. So if we go back here to the build menu, You'll take a look here. If I click on, for instance, Xbox 360, okay? If I look at Xbox 360, your license does not cover Xbox 360 publishing, contact sales. So I'll have to go find out what the licensing fee is to get the, the Unity Pro license to target that platform. So in answer to, uh, to answer your question, yes, there are pro, uh, pro version platforms that are locked. 
if we go back to adding a new scene, so what I did was, all I did was went File, New Scene, and you can see I've got a very blank scene. If I run the scene, I'll see pretty much nothing at all. See, nothing, because I've got nothing in my world except for a camera. So this is easy to see in the hierarchy. It's a brand new scene, and you can do whatever you need to from it. And the important part of prefabs is that you can drag and drop them into a scene. So you see I've just dragged a bomb from my prefabs folder into the scene and immediately if I run it again I've got that bomb. So this is this is one of the, the cool things about Unity is the fact that you can template objects and create instances of them. So that was one way of creating an instance of an object where I have a prefab that I've dragged in but the next question is what is a prefab? Well, if I go and I create myself a game object, so I'm going to choose Sprite just so I can have a 2D representation. I can choose whatever Sprite I want it to look like, and it's in my world. But now, if I want to, let's just call this player left as an example. Player left. If I want to be able to make an instance of player left in another level that has the exact same properties, I need to make a prefab. And the easiest way to do this is once you've got a a game object in a world, you'll see the text on it is black. I can drag it into here, into my project uh, project view, and it'll make me a prefab. So you see I've got that player left, and you'll see in the actual scene, it shows that player left is in blue. I don't know if it's visible at that zoom, but here you can see that it's blue instead of black, and that means that I've made a prefab of it. So that's an object that if I change the prefab, the properties on it will change. So that's another important note, is if I go take this player left prefab, I can change it with another prefab, another I change its properties with another sprite, and you'll see it's changed from that player sprite to the star. So that's just something that's good to keep in mind. So the prefabs are basically ways of creating uh, objects that have the same properties over and over again. So I'm just going to quickly remove that prefab and remove that from the world. And we're going to take a look at adding the scene to the build options. So I showed you under the build settings that you needed to, let's just save the scene, it's temporary, that you needed to have the scenes that you want your game to have listed here. So what I've just done is I saved the level and I called it temporary and when the build menu came up I clicked add current and as you can see it added it to the list. Now the important thing to know is when you want to move between scenes what you have to do is have the scene that you're moving to listed in the build list. So if it isn't listed and ticked over here in this build settings you won't be able to switch to it. So you just need to remember when you add new scenes to add them to build. So if we just go back to the menu, so I'm going to go to my scenes and I've got a main menu scene here. I'm going to quickly add on to my button code. So if you take a look at my play button here, it's got a play button script. Uh, I'm going to add code to move to that temporary scene. So the way that I'm going to do this is, is if I go into my, my Visual Studio project, and you'll notice Unity by default uses Mono Develop, but you can use Visual Studio. And I'm going to go to my menu and I'm going to go to my play button script. And in my update, I'm going to say if, let me just zoom in, if input dot get key down. So you'll notice that we can get input through our script very easily. So we're going to say if a key is done, we're going to go key code dot C on the keyboard. If that is done, we're going to use application dot load level and we're going to give the name. All right. So if I go into my game now, I should be able to run it. And if I'm here at the menu and I press C, it'll go to my temporary scene. There's one issue at the moment because there's nothing in my temporary scene. So let's just go change that. So temporary Let's go to prefabs and let's just put in the player and let's put in a bomb. And we're going to just quickly align them to a grid. 
if we go back to our main menu, save changes, and run it, if we press C, you'll see we can, oops, that's not good. Did I save that? I did save that. The main camera should be here. The scene supposedly has a player object. Okay. Object not set to an instance of object. Okay, I'm running into an issue here quickly, if you'll just give me a moment. If the key is pressed C, load level temporary. Okay, let's just go back to our menu. So scenes, main menu. Is there an error? There isn't an error, it loaded, it's just not showing anything. Okay. Um, in an effort to save time, I'm not going to spend too long trying to figure out what went wrong, but we're going to move on to the next thing, which is instantiating uh, objects from code. Okay, so the next thing to take a look at is, is if I go to this progress controller, you'll see I've got these bronze star prefab options. So when I've created a prefab, I can create a property on my uh, components that's of type game object. And you see I can select a game object, and every object that I've made a, a prefab of is available here. So this is how when you do things like effects and so on, you can add them in to your project. So here I wanted to be able to create a bronze star and I did this by making an instance of bronze star. So if I go to my component for my progress controller, and I just let me zoom in so you can see better, you'll see this here is my variable. So I've got a public game object, bronze star prefab, and that is the, the object that I added in my prefab to be able to instantiate it from code. Okay, so if I just quickly go to where I'm using this prefab, so you'll see here in code, I've got a, a, a single function that spawns, I've got two functions, but the main one that spawns a star at a position. And all I do is I say instantiate, I use the bronze star prefab, and I'm giving a location, which is a, a vector in 3D, and a rotation. And this rotation that we're using is identity to say that we don't want rotation. But there is a simpler way that we can do that. If I just change this, I can use instantiate, and I can just use my prefab. So as a simple example, bronze star prefab. And this will create the prefab at the point that this object is right now. So that is how you would instant, uh, create instances of prefabs inside code. Now, I'm sure it doesn't make a lot of sense at this point, but let me explain to you a quick scenario of where this becomes useful. So I'm going to swap back, swap over here to my generate button script and just talk you through it uh, to explain why needing to create objects with script is a good idea. So on my level selection screen, I needed a way to add in buttons. So all I've got here simply is I've got a template for a button and I create myself a vector 3 for where I want it to be positioned in the world, and I get its component, which is a level button script, and I set properties on it. So this will be the level to load, the name of the scene, and then I spawn the star for the progress. So this is very simple and very easy to do, and if I go look at the level button script, all I did was in the script, I added properties that had the level to load and the level to load ID, which I use inside of it. So you can create objects that suit your needs uh, as you go along in your project. And we'll look more into components when we start with 2D, because we're going to make components for movement, and we're going to do things for handling animation, and hopefully it'll start to make more sense then. So today, the aim for today was to try aim at to a 45 minutes to an hour long session just to introduce the basics about the Unity editor. 
So if you guys have any further questions about the editor, you can feel free to ask them and I can show you specific things if you need to. But that concludes what content I have for today. So let me just switch back to here for now. So if you've got questions and such, I can answer them. I hope everything was clear. And just a reminder, this video will go up onto YouTube later today. Anis, I have a question. Uh, uh, I guess uh, someone has asked it uh, earlier before, but I just want to confirm that is this Unity 3D setup uh, free of cost or it has some payment? Yeah, so Unity 3D itself is free, but you'll notice in some of the menus it says that there are pro things, and that requires a license. So the license for Unity is not free. Um, it is cheaper for students if your university supports it, but everything that we'll be doing and most of the things that you'll want to do are available in the free version. Thank you. No problem. Um, hello, Anist. Hello, everyone. Hi there. Uh, sorry, I'm late. Uh, maybe you maybe you had given some information about what I'm about to ask. Uh, but uh, so I haven't done any gaming app application or gaming program, but uh, maybe uh, I'm more interested in Unity 3D. So where do I get the resources so that I get, you know, I set up the environment and maybe get started? So once you know your way around the, the environment, most of it becomes quite easy to understand. So... Mm. With with the basics of how I've explained where you can find things, you can start to already tinker with building things in Unity 3D. Mm -hmm. um, you might have missed quite a bit of the explanation of where to find things and how things are done. Yeah. So it might be confusing for you, but when the video goes up, you can review it and okay. see what you missed. So okay. that'll that'll give you the basics of using Unity 3D. Uh, as an IDE and you can then take a look at the processes involved in deciding on what you want to build and hopefully come up with an idea that you like. Ah, thank you. No problem. Are there any other further questions? Cool. Thank you everybody for attending. Uh, I would just like to remind you guys um, there is a Facebook group, and I'll be posting updates and such to there. Uh, if you can, if you haven't joined there already, please do. And my contact details are available at my blog. And also, I look forward to seeing you guys next week, where we'll start in Unity 2D, and the week after, where we'll start looking at building games together. Thank you very much.